Now, before you go get a HELOC, before you implement the Acceler Banking strategy, heck, even implementing any financial investment strategy ever, period, you gotta do this. And I'm about to say the B word, and a lot of you guys are gonna cringe, and that is budgeting. And I know, I know, I know some of you guys are cringing and some of you are shuddering at the idea of budgeting, but it's super duper important before you go get your HELOC for the Acceler Banking strategy. In fact, I can say that for just about any financial strategies, whether you're investing in stocks, bonds, mutual funds, real estate, you name it. Because the very core principle and the idea behind budgeting is going to affect how you invest, how you save money, all the rest of the things in terms of financial success. Now, this video is not gonna be how to budget or anything like that. You guys can check out some of the other YouTube videos out there and they're wonderful. They do a great job explaining how to set a proper budget, income, expenses, everything, you name it. But what I ultimately wanna share with you in this video is something that my family does every single week that allows us to take the budgeting and actually do something with it to increase our financial well being. And I hope this video serves as an inspiration and a challenge for you to try it out for yourself and your family as well. So every week on Sunday night, my my wife and I do something called an FL10 meeting. It stands for Family Level 10 Meeting. Now, the idea of an L10 or Level 10 meeting comes from a concept known as EOS, which stands for Entrepreneurial Operating System, which was originally created by a guy named Gene Wickman. Now, EOS, Entrepreneurial Operating System, as the name suggests, is mainly for entrepreneurial organizations and companies. And honestly, this is how I run all my businesses is using the EOS system. And because how well it worked for my company and helping us create unity and as well as organization and allows us to be very clear about things in our businesses. I've also decided to implement this in our family as well. And I gotta tell you, it's a night and day and my wife loves this meeting. So basically what we do is after dinner on Sunday night, we typically set aside 30 minutes to do this meeting and it's super duper powerful. So the first thing we do is about five minutes into the meeting, what we start out is we share with some wins. So we look at the last seven days and we go, hey, what are some of the things that were really good? Something that we could high five each other. What are some of the positives that we can highlight that we can celebrate. Now, this is really cool because what it does, it is sets the tone for the rest of the meeting for it to be positive. It allows us to focus on the brighter side or brighter perspective rather than just bringing complaints and issues and problems all the time, which kind of makes the meeting kind of dreadful. So we kick things off with high fives, well dones, wins, all the good things that happened in the last seven days. And then what we look at is we look at all the to do's or the things that we promised that we would do over the last seven days to see if they were done or not. Now, this is great because it brings incredible layer of clarity and accountability to each other. So let's say my wife and I decided from last week's meeting, last week's FL10 meeting, that I need to go call a contractor to fix something in my house. Well, it's to check, did I do it or not? And if I didn't, obviously, either I gotta try harder or I have to explain to her as to what were some of the challenges and what we need to do about moving forward. Now, this is not the time to blame or to throw excuses out, but to take ownership and be responsible and act as a team because after all, we are a team. From there, the next thing we do is something called the calendar sync. And what we're looking at is she takes out her calendar, I take out my calendar, and we just get in sync as to what's happening, what events are there, what meetings do we have, are there certain events that she needs to know, and are there events that I need to know from her perspective. So it allows us to really get in sync so that if it's Thursday and tomorrow I have a very important meeting with some clients, it's not a surprise to my wife and she's wondering, well, why didn't you tell me that earlier, right? So on Sunday, it allows us to look at the next seven days and say, hey, I have these things going on. I might be missing out this dinner or I have to leave the house early on Friday or whatever the case might be. That way she knows what's going on, I know what's going on and we're both on the same page as far as what's happening in the next seven days. And the next thing we do is we look at our finances, our budget, and that's the point of this video. So what we do is we take out our budgeting app found on our smartphone and we happen to be using an app called Rocket money. There's several dozens of different budgeting apps and I'm not here to advertise or say one of them is a sponsor. I'm not saying that, but as long as you have some budgeting system that both you and your spouse or partner can agree on and both of you can use it, both of you are bought in, then perfect. As long as it's being tracked, as long as you know what money's coming in, what money's going out, what budget is allocated to what, and what's important to you and for the family, that's all that matters for the most part. As long as you can do that basic thing, then everything else is pretty much covered. So we take out our apps and we look at our budgets, how much we spent this past seven days, on what categories, are there things that we overspent, um, are there transactions that we don't know or any uh, you know hidden fees that we need to be looking at. So we use Rocket Money for that purpose. And if there are categories that are overspending and we're not being careful with, then we talk about it. And again, the point of this is not to play the blame game or to point the finger at the other person, but simply say, hey, 
we both agree to this and we're gonna commit to it, what can we do to help each other so that we can empower and we can move forward so that we can be more intentional and deliberate about how we manage our money. And so we go through that together and we give each other high fives for well done. I try to keep it 80% celebration, 20%, hey, here's some things that we need to work on. Uh, just so that, again, I don't wanna make the meeting feel like a chore. It should be something that we both look forward to, that we both wanna talk about, we both wanna do to better empower our family and take care of our families better. So uh, that's the next thing we do, finances and budgeting, something that we do every day. Now, at the end of all that, then we talk about issues and things that we need to work on together. So we might have issues related to finance. We might have issues related to the house that we need to repair something or something is broken. There might be an issue with our kids, right? Or uh, school related things. And usually we reserve that time to talk about what is the problem? What is the underlying issue? Then we discuss what we can do about it and come up with the best solution. And then we commit to uh, taking action in the next seven days. And that's what ultimately leads to when we do the meeting next week, we go back, look to see what we've promised to do when we committed to see if it was done or not. So that is the meeting in a nutshell. We start with wins, high fives, celebrate. We then review last week's to do and make sure that everything's scratched off or if not, we try to overcome it together as a team. Then we do a calendar sync. We do budget review to see if there's anything that's off track. And then we talk about issues. Now, I talked to many of my friends that also have taken this idea and ran it with themselves. And it's really important that this meeting is something of collaboration, not trying to blame or kill each other, right? None of that, because that's not the point of this meeting. This meeting should be about acknowledging that you and your spouse, your partner are a team and you're working together, that you are taking yes, ownership and accountability, but at the same time, knowing that each of you have the best interest at heart for each other, that is gonna be the biggest thing. And I know this video was not meant to be a family or a therapy lesson on how to uh, be a good family, but I gotta tell you, ever since implementing this meeting, uh, it has been a night and day difference. My wife is looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it. And to be completely transparent, if I'm making a confession here, is that we had a hard time with our budget. Uh, there are certain, certain months or a stretch of months where we were spending way more money than what we're bringing in. And to me, I had a bit of fear because I, you know, I talk about finance, I'm in finance, and it's embarrassing to not have your budgets in control and order and not be intentional about it. And that's what I was afraid of for a very long time. And thankfully, because my wife and I decided to do this meeting together, ever since then, we got way more intentional, way more deliberate, and it empowered us to make the right decisions when it comes to our finances. And I'm happy to say that we finally have our budgets in control, we have positive cash flow. we're actually being good stewards with our money as opposed to just spending it all, uh, which was the case for us for a very long time. So again, I know this started out as kind of like, oh, Sam's telling us the budget, I get it. But I actually wanna show you what I am doing. I'm you know, preaching what I'm doing because it had a huge impact in our family finances. It gave us a lot of harmony and peace. It really does allow us to have financial peace of mind. And when we have peace of mind, we can make better financial decisions so that we're not under stress or some kind of pressure. So I hope what I'm sharing with you, you guys can take it, run it, maybe make it your own, right? Change some of the formats a little bit, experiment to see how it works. Um, it's not gonna be perfect at first, you may need to buy in from your husband or her wife, but I gotta tell you right now, it made a huge difference for not only our marriage, our family, our finances, so much. I made a night and day difference. So with that being said, I hope this video inspires you to try that out, okay? I'm not saying it's, it's a perfect meeting, but it's something that you can do to help advance and move your family together. So before you go out and do any financial strategy, whether you wanna invest in something, stocks, bonds, mutual funds, real estate, crypto, whatever the case might be, or you wanna do our strategy, solid banking method of getting a line of credit to paying off your mortgage faster, before all else, uh, and I know many of our financial community and experts will agree, get your budget in order. Just at least track how much money is coming in, how much is going out. Obviously, it's not a good place to be in. So having said that, another quick little video that I wanna share with you, and this is something that I'm working with our clients on as well. But if you thought this was helpful, please leave your comments down below and share this with friends, families, you name it, and we'll see you in the next video. Take care.